God's love. All the time. time. All the time. God's love. We've got some announcements to make, so I'm starting just a little bit early um, because we want to we want to save time for the good stuff, like the Word of God and singing to Jesus. But this is good stuff too. So before Gary makes a quick announcement, I want to mention that we're starting. We're very close. I, I mean, if we have the money, we could literally be done, Ro Robert, in two months. Yeah. We could open Future Up in two months if we had the money. And we're about 80% complete. And we're talking about ceiling tile. We're talking about starting to finish in the bathroom, furnishing it, the showers, rooms. So let me just say quickly that, that going forward, as a step of faith, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we've walked by faith. and not by Right. As a step of faith from us, and of course, other people are donating. Praise God. I don't know if I'm allowed to say who did it. But over the past, let me just say this. Over the past two weeks, and we were getting down to crunch time with money, we've had uh, almost $2,000 donated to streets. And it was, as God sometimes works, just in the nick of time. Because of both. we got to keep giving. But from our, from our steps of faith here, Rob is going to be posting supplies that we need like this like whatever this is electrical supplies for example and you can either get with him or just go to a home depot or wherever and you can purchase like a supply an actual thing we need to complete the project so that's one way and these more of these are in the back but i'm going to leave this one up here for now and the second thing we're going to do and everyone can do this how many of you i raise your hands remember the, the oops Okay. Uh, well, this is for future help, and this is for we're going to put on here a, a pledge drive from our church. A pledge drive. And everybody can do it. Because I'm thinking of the woman, raise your hand if you remember the woman in the Bible that gave her last three months. Remember? Everybody can do it. So if you are like broke, say amen if you've ever been broke. Amen. Say it loud if you've ever been broke. Amen. amen. So we know how what that's like. But let's say, on this, if you'll hold this path. Pat is holding the pledge box. You can pick up one of these sheets up here or at the front, and you can put a circle around the amount that you would like to give every week until the renovations are done. And why am I sure everybody can do this? Because we've even got one penny on there. And if you can't give a penny a week, then I'll give you five cents, and you can give a penny a week. Amen? Everybody, these are steps of faith. Honoring God, maybe you can circle a nickel or 15 cents, 20 cents, all the way up to $50. And there's even a spot if you're loaded. Can I say that? If you're just rolling in it, you got money trading back, you can write in whatever you'd like to give every week. Amen. This is what Ansley First Baptist Church is going to do. As others are giving from outside, from other churches, yeah, you can hand them out if you'd like. And, and it's going to be like the woman that gave the three mites. You're going to circle it, and only you know. Hear me now. Only you know what you circled on the paper. And it's an act of faith. You're going to walk up and put it in the box yourself. We'll have it right up here. And then, starting next week, or you can do it this week, you can put in the amount that you circled. So if it's a penny, no one knows but you. We're going to put these in the safe, and every week... Okay, the money goes in the future and hope, the pledge goes in the, and we will in the other one. And I'm going to do mine after the service so we can get going here. All right, so I hope that makes sense. I'll announce it again next week, and we'll keep explaining until everybody's got it figured out. You can give one penny or up to $50 or anywhere in between, and you put it in a box, and then every week you put it in steps of faith towards finishing the renovations future and the hope. Gary's up with an announcement. Here we go. Listen up, y'all. This is very important. You got to hear this. Listen up. I uh, just want to uh, praise God this morning that the, uh, the store paid off now. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And that's, I think that's, 
praying for the store. Uh, I do want to give a special thanks to uh, our, our manager up there, Ashley. Yes. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the way she runs that store. I mean, she is, uh, she pours her heart and soul into it, and she's behind what we're doing here. Uh, Nate. And I want to praise God and, uh, for Gary and Jessica's leadership out there. Not only did he, it's only been, how long have we had the store, Gary? Uh, three years. Has that been two years? In June will be two years. June will be two years. So, in that short period of time, it went from what it was, you ought to go out there if you haven't been in a while. It is so clean and, and organized and sharp. And in that short period of time, and paid off. Excellent leadership by Gary and Jessica. I want to give Jesus praise for the whole thing. Everybody, that's a God thing. That's a God thing. Thank you, Jesus. And, of course, that's going to help a future and a hope as we move forward. All right. I think that's it. Robert has a quick one. Uh, yeah, real quick. Just to add on what Pastor was saying, back here in the back, you guys will see a sign-up seat in the back when you talk about some of the supplies that we needed. Uh, Bob was nice. He went ahead and just printed extra copy so you can actually take a sheet with you. If you just want to, like on here, what we have is like a pack of like dimmer switches or a pack of receptacles, things like that, help with the project. Now, if, if you want to do something like that, go ahead and sign off on it. This master copy will be in the back. So we don't have multiple people, oh, I'll go get receptacles, and I only need four cases, but we end up with 20. So this way, we can, you can see what the need is. But also, say if you don't feel comfortable, because with everything that's going on, going to like Home Depot or Lowe's, things like that, You'd be more glad to donate the money to us. We'll make sure it's specified for what you're getting for that, too, to help you out during this. And Thank if you, you have any questions, you come see me uh, in the back. I can show service. Robert, could we, like, get, if we're at Home Depot, could we get, like, a gift card or something like that? I mean, if you just want to go up and get a gift card uh, from them or anywhere, you can do that, too. And we'll make sure it's specified for what you want to go for. That's right. I almost uh, forgot something extremely important. We'd ask all the veterans to come down. Let's honor. It's Memorial Day, the fall, and let's come forward and we're going to sing. Your veteran, come on down here. Um, we will face the flag. We're going to sing. What page, Mindy? Everybody stand. 511. 511. Verse 1 and 4. We're going to honor those who gave all. Pray rest but in fact
the rest of y'all please be seated. I'll say this out loud. We're going to go ahead and this prayer will also be the, the prayer that we would do typically afterwards. So I'll do the prayer. And, uh, and then so Robert just blow through that slide if you would. All right. Here we go. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Let's praise him this morning. Jesus, we love you. Jesus. And we praise you. Amen. Hallelujah. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would, as we sing, as we pray, as we give, as we worship, as we hear your word, we pray for you to totally and absolutely take over the room, take over our hearts, our minds. We pray that no unclean spirit be allowed in this house or anywhere near us today. Heal bodies, Lord. Touch bodies. Keep us safe, but we pray that no virus is allowed on this property. And Lord, going forward, that you would bind and crush this thing. And, and uh, Lord, let us go free to serve and to move and to breathe and yeah. to share your gospel without fear. Yeah. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name this morning. We're praying, Lord, for those that are struggling to walk with you. We're praying for those that are uh, prodigal sons and daughters. We're praying for the lost this morning. Lift them up, church. Lift them up. Yeah. We're thanking you, Jesus, that if we believe and put our trust in you, as we've called on you, we become the children of God. Your child of God, say amen this morning. Amen. Now, Lord, as we give and as we worship and as we sing, please receive our hearts today. Let's be genuine, Jesus. Let there be no folk, fake uh, bone in our body. We just pray, Jesus, that we would just be so much seeking your face in genuine worship, worshiping in spirit. In your Holy Spirit and in truth. And we just pray that you'll take over, Lord. Bless these tithes and offerings now. Thank you, Jesus, for providing reinforcements for the money for future and hope. Lord, help us to bring it home so we can help these women. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, let's worship. Thank you. 
grace. Thank you for his goodness. I was in, 
I was in full-blown daddy mode. Amen? Amen. I was in, uh, oh, no, you don't. Somebody's going to get tore up. It ain't going to be my baby girls. Get in the house, and uh, somebody come get your dog. Amen. Amen. Right. So dads can be protectors. Say amen if you agree. Amen. If I'm going through this, maybe you had a good experience with your dad here on earth. Just think about maybe let some memories flow, but stay with me. They can be protectors. They can be educators. Raise your hand if your dad's ever taught you something. Maybe, maybe raise your hand if you've ever rejected that and then come back later. It's on his cheek or something. Come back like he might have been right about something. All right? My dad, my dad was an educator. He was my principal. There's only one thing worse than being a son of a principal is being a son of a pastor. Can I get an amen? Uh, dads can be advisors. It's kind of the same thing, right? Um, counselors, encouragers. Um, they, my dad was my coach, my baseball coach, right? They can be coaches. Uh, my dad was my principal, as I mentioned. And I have high respect for my dad. To this day, um, highly respect my dad. Today being, um, or this weekend being Memorial Day weekend, my dad went to Vietnam, and he was a captain in the Army. And his job as a captain in the Army, his assignment was to retrieve dead bodies. So, and his men were to retrieve dead bodies. And so you can only imagine what a weekend like this means for his memory, right? Highly respect my dad and all that he's been through. I'm the oldest son of Jerry Norman Henry. Dad, I love you if you watch this, and I'm so thankful I'm your son. What would you tell me about your dad if we were able to sit down and have a discussion? I hope you do in, in, in time to come. We all have a daddy on earth, right? Or I don't know how you got here. If you didn't, I'd like to hear about that too. Do you have a heavenly father? Amen. Are you a child of God? Yes, I am. Is everybody a child of God? No. Now last week, Paul took us back to school at the University of Faith. Salvation 101. Today, who is your daddy? Out of reverence to God, just one verse today. Um, and it's, but it's a powerful verse. The Holy Spirit slowed me down. We're in verse 29. And uh, we're going to take a slow look at this. Please stand out of reverence to God and his word. Holy Spirit of God, please help us now. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that you'd get honor and glory today. Holy Spirit, that no error would leave uh, my mouth or, Lord, that we would not leave this room confused in any way. Help us to understand your word and to live it. Please keep the enemy far away. It is in Jesus' name we pray to our Father in heaven and all God's children said. Amen. Faith in Jesus, verse 29, for ye are all the children of God by what's it say? By faith. For ye are all children of God by by faith in Christ Jesus. Praise God for his word. Please be seated. We're going to keep the heart of this message, the heart of the Galatian message in mind, because this could go all over the place if you're not careful. And all that we've studied thus far, by the way, quick plug for those that are watching on Facebook Live or those that have to be gone or miss the service, all of our services, for the most part, go on our webpage. So if you need to catch up in Galatians at any point, chapter 1, chapter 2, or 3, um, you can find those there as long as... As well as that is many many other messages so keep the heart of the Galatian message in mind faith in Jesus alone saves faith in Jesus why do we keep repeating this well because Paul keeps repeating this amen it's important to drive it home because religion messes everything up did I say that yes I did amen. religion and religious folks can mess it all up if we start to try to take credit what only Jesus can do. We start to add to the cross and say, yeah, great, you're saved, but you got to do this, that, and the other thing. No, faith alone in Jesus saves. So Paul's driving home. 
Works will not save. We've marked it many times. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Now the Judaizers, they were teaching the Galatians error. They were bringing confusion into the church, confusion into the camp. Their error to be a child of God, sure, sure, yes, to be a child of God, sure, sure. Faith in Jesus is important. But to be truly a child of God, you Galatians need to be circumcised. Today's lies, we've covered this extensively, and when we did, we put a picture of the thief up on the cross, and we asked the question, and I gave many, many examples, what could he do to work out his salvation, to, to make himself saved in his own effort? Nothing. We covered that pretty extensively, and on Good Friday, if I remember correctly. So today's lies, just to briefly summarize, it's good you believe Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, non-denomination. It's good that you believe, but are you baptized with water? Are you keeping the feasts? Are you keeping the Sabbath? Let's talk about your diet. Have you had pork in the last seven days? Any guilties in here? We love pork. Some frown on that with all seriousness. And they struggle with your salvation if that be the case. We've covered all that. We've covered it. I'm not going there again, but these are the issues of the day. Adding works to salvation. And, and I also want to say and remember and remind us that many of those things are biblical, like that water baptism, submersion is biblical. But the water doesn't save you, amen? amen? Many of those things I've mentioned are very good. Some of them are not, but many of them are good. But they don't save. Only Jesus saves. Only the Holy Spirit of God regenerates, brings rebirth, born again, born again, only by Jesus Christ. John 3, 3, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Spiritual rebirth. Amen? See Titus 3, 5. Not works or any act of man will save a soul. Driving this home. We're moving. Adding a religious requirement to be qualified to be a child of God is exactly what the legalists do. Um, our friend who's in heaven, Dr. Chuck Missler, has mentioned that, that Jesus was the most anti-religious human being, man of God, son of God, uh, God in the flesh. The most, uh, I'm adding that, but, but he was anti-religious. If you have any doubt about that, read John chapter 8. We'll touch on that in a little bit here. He, uh, because religion can't save. He came to seek and save, save the lost. He came to go to the cross to become sin for us. He's the son of God, the lamb of God, the, the sacrifice. It was only through Jesus, John 14, 6, that you can get to heaven, that you can get to the Father, that you can be reunited with God. Somebody say amen. 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 So the stench of religious Superiority fills a room as the legalists lift their prideful noses skyward. Have you ever heard a religious person talk one way when they're just hanging out with their family? But when they get around relig other religious folks, it's almost their whole tone of the way they talk changes. Have you ever heard that? I have. It's bizarre to me. It's bizarre to me. It's kind of like when I came to the South and I tried to be a Southerner and I tried to adopt, the, you're shaking your head, I tried to shake the Yankee off and it just seemed more good. Ah, Y'all, I'm trying. Molina, Molina will help you. Maybe. There might be hope. Maybe this is Paul's battle we see here. Um, and, or maybe... The Judaizers simply taught a circumcision salvation because of their Jewish roots, and it's what we do. Maybe that was their motivation. In any case, they didn't, they didn't feel uh, 
They didn't feel the Galatians were equal until they were circumcised. And Paul is addressing this. He's hitting hard. He's opening the full. Uh, he's on, you know he's on opening the magazine wide open. He's letting the, the bullets fly. He is letting them know, spiritually speaking, that, that no circumcision has zero to do with these Galatians being saved. Uh, it, it, that act of man will not save them. Only Jesus saves, only faith in Jesus. Paul's statement in verse 26 would be blasphemy to the Pharisees. Gentiles, children of God, they would not, certainly not have that. Paul's statement in verse 26 would be heresy to the Judaizers, to the legalists. And circumcision, uh, then maybe, maybe the Judaizers would, would allow the Galatians to come on board if you get circumcised. Paul's statement in verse 26 would be praiseworthy. To a born again child of God. Amen? Amen? Paul is speaking to critics and to the confused. Ye are all, ye are all, ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Period. It is such a little verse and it's so amazing how many religious folks stumble on that and add works. Not just religious folks, but cults and isms, and, and even those, Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. Even to the religious folks, the Jews that should have known better. Period. Ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Period. That little period there matters. Before faith alone in Jesus, are we children of God? I'm going to say it again and say it slowly. It's a question. Before faith alone in Jesus, are we or were we children of God? No. Have you, have you heard? Have you heard anyone ever say, well, we are all children of God. We're all children of God. Are we? I've been in a lot of funerals. I've been in a lot of funerals where we're, we're all children of God. He's just gone up to the man upstairs. Has he? Children of wrath. On that note, on that note, I want Gary, you to go to Ephesians 2 1 through 5. You're going to read it here in a minute. <coughs> I meant to grab my big print Bible, but if you'll go there, Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. We're going to go there here in a minute. Would Jesus agree with that statement, well, we're just all children of God? Would he agree with that? Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 8, verse 42 through 44. John chapter 8, verse 42 through 44. Let's see what Jesus has to say about it because, because what Jesus has to say about it is really and truly all that matters. Because he's calling shots. He's the one that took the shots. He's the one that died for us. He's the one that lived the sin, sinless, no sin life. He is the word of God. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. John 8 and 42. Jesus said unto them, say amen if you're with me. Amen. John 8, 42, Jesus said unto them, he's speaking to the Pharisees, if God were your father, now that implies through this dialogue that they believed that God was their father. Well, for sure, right? Because they were children of who? Abraham. They were the, the chosen. They were the children of Abraham. So certainly they were children of God. If God were your father, Jesus tells these these were high, how do I say this, Lord? These were big shots in the religious community. These were the big dogs in Jeff's word. These were the guys that were recognized when they walked into a room 
Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you see where this is going? Ye would love me. So he's implying that they did not love him. Of course they didn't. They didn't believe in him. Even though he was showing signs, he was fulfilling the Old Testament right before their very eyes. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Do you sense they're getting a little irritated as his words go forward? They're getting hot under the collar. Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Jesus tells them. I picture Jesus, the Son of God, with zero fear looking into their eyes. Their dark eyes, I might add. Even because you cannot hear my word. You are, oh, here it is. Oh, my. If there was a shot heard around the world in the history of time, this was one of the first ones. Verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. Jesus is telling them that their daddy is not Father God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who did he tell them their daddy was? These religious folks? Are there religious folks today whose daddy, dare I say, is the devil? You have your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and, a, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him, speaking of the devil. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He called these religious folks uh, children of the devil. So Jesus would not agree that all of us are God's children, would he? All right, so Jesus said they were the devil's children. He's speaking to the religious leaders. And if he's telling religious leaders that, help me, Holy Spirit, that their, their daddy was the devil, that they weren't born again because they didn't believe in Jesus, because they didn't love Jesus, because they wanted to crucify Jesus, if, if, if Jesus is telling religious folks that, what about folks that don't believe in Jesus that, that maybe they're just into secular humanism or they're just about themselves or they're their own God? Who is their daddy? Well, it's, it needs they have to believe in Jesus just like those Pharisees and Sadducees. For Father God to be their father, to be their dad, to be children of God. Somebody say amen if you are with me there. Amen. Before faith in Jesus, children of Adam, yes. But children of God, no. See, with the, the DNA problem we have coming into this world, um, we have a DNA problem. What is that? Sin. Sin. A sin nature. Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is Genesis 3. Who were the two? Who are who was Papa and Mama there? Did sin? Now was I'm gonna to get to this, but was Adam a direct creation of God Almighty? Yes. yes, it was. I hope you're following. It's time, Gary, stand and read it really loud. Verses 1 through 5, let's say. Chapter 2, Ephesians. Yes, sir. And you hath he quickened unto, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had all our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, were come the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. By nature the what? Uh, one more time. The children of wrath. Okay. Even as others. Preach it, Gary. Stay up. Give me, give me a thirty-second sermon. <laughs> oh wow. Well, we, we, uh, as, as as Christians, we, we're. Uh, you know, we, Before we, salvation. Before salvation, we were children of disobedience. We walked in that way. Uh, we walked in the course of our flesh, of our lust, of our flesh. Uh, this old nature, this. Uh, Adam, as we are the son of Adam, the first Adam, we, we walk according to 
the sin that we were born into. Uh, as by one man sin came into the world, and that was the first Adam, and by uh, one man the, the question of sin was taken care of, and so Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Give a man 30 seconds to take 60. You see that? Amen. <laughs> That was good. That was very good. Before, before we're born again, before we're saved, children of wrath, wrath, following the devil, following. So the person that's not saved, are they any different than those Pharisees Jesus was talking to? No different, right? A biblical child of God is what we're talking about today. A biblical child of God is... Um, well, a biblical child of God is a direct creation of God. So before Adam sinned, Genesis 1 and 2, he was directly created by God. Amen. Say amen if you agree. Amen. A direct creation of God would be the angels. <clears throat> Today, uh, uh, ha Elohim, I think is how it said, the sons of God. See Genesis chapter 6. All the angels. Did Jesus create the angels? Yes. And then when Jesus in his incarnate create, he came into this world through the virgin, that is, Mary, so the God-man, 100% God, 100% uh, man, Jesus was also a direct creation of God in that sense, born into this world. But Jesus was never created. He's always existed. Does that make sense? Yes. So you, <laughs> that'll twist your tongue, Jeff Henry. He's always existed. Don't let me get anybody confused. But as far as him coming into this world, who is his father? Father God, right? Amen. Okay. Well, I hope I didn't confuse anybody there because I just think I confused myself. <laughs> how does one go, as we bring this home, how does one go from being a child of Satan to a child of God? Blood of Christ. We have our answer in the Word of God. In John chapter 1, the same chapter where it makes the, the, the statement, the word makes the statement that Jesus came unto his own and his own received him now, we find in verse 12 our answer. A true child of God, but as many as, but as, many as receive him, who's him? Jesus. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. There it is. That's where, that's where you become a child of God when you, uh, when you receive him. It even goes uh, on, even to them, I love that, even to them that believe on his name. Faith in Jesus Christ alone. And you, you see that faith manifest or come out when you see somebody call out to Jesus, Romans 10, 13, for salvation and they are saved. Child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. Yes, I am. A couple years ago, I um, was babysitting Violet at home, and I would give the girls, I still do, but now I'm far more cautious, a quarter when they would do a chore of some kind. They've learned how to work that pretty good, I might add. <laughs> they have more cash than I have. Have them put some in the bucket down here for the future. Know. I'd given her a quarter, and I don't know where Maddie was. I have no idea where anybody was. It was me and Violet at the house. And all of a sudden, I had this ill feeling come over me, and she was quiet and in her bedroom. And I went in there to check on her, and she had that quarter caught in her throat. And she went to turn it blue. And Mindy was gone, and I was trying to call, couldn't get hold of Mindy, and I was in. There was nothing I could do. I, I didn't know if I could do the Heimlich. I was, normally, I don't panic. I've been in life and death situations, like on Big Lagoon, for example. But in that case, that's my baby girl, and where's, there's no nurse, there's no anybody, and I, I, I need to get better at handling those situations. And I, I thought about going to the Heimlich, and about that time, I just cried out to God, I can't, I, I can't save her, God, here, help me out. She turned blue, and she vomited, and up came the court. Oh, 
By the way, we need to put that girl in a straight jacket until she's 50. <laughs> we call, do you realize she walks around on her tiptoes? Yeah. Everywhere she goes. And she's got to run 90% of the time. And we call her crash for a reason. There's things we earthly dads can do, but there's things that we can't do. There's, it's an eight in every mama bear and every parent and every dad to guard their children. My girls say to me, can we play out in the yard? And I say, yes, but don't leave the porch. <laughs> the porch is like three foot. And then uh, Minnie's like, Rolls her eyes, then I cut him a little slack, then he'll go past the bush. And then, Daniel, check on the girls. How many times have you heard that one, Daniel? 8,000. Where are the girls? I'm at, I'm at my mom's yesterday visiting my, my youngest brother who was, who was visiting with his family. He's got a little girl, Eliza. And, and she got up, and I just said, Where's Eliza? And they brought her in. We are, it's in us to try to save and protect those that God has given us. Amen? Amen. There's things that we can do, earthly dad, but there's some things we can't do. We can't save our children's souls. As much as I would like to, it has to be their own experience with Jesus where they cry out for salvation. We can't rescue them from hell. Can we? Father God sent his son to die for us. He rose again the third day and he saves. To join God's family, to be able to say that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father God, the Father that Jesus prayed to. To be able to say that Father God, the only God, is your daddy. To join the family, what must you do? Believe on his name. The name Jesus Christ. Period. Please stand. Let's bow our heads as we head for our invitation. Maybe you're here and or you're listening on Facebook Live and you've tried to be religious. You've tried to do better. You've tried to change your life on your own. Keep some commandments. Just live a, live a better life. And as well as that sounds, and as, as much as I respect that effort, our good efforts, our good works, will not, will not, or cannot, or never will save us. Your earthly daddy, your earthly mama, their efforts, their faith in Christ cannot save you. If you die without Jesus Christ as your Savior, then the God of the universe, he is not your father. You will go to a place called hell, and Father God does not want you to go there. He wants you to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, for salvation. So I ask the question, do you believe? And from that belief, out of your mouth will come a cry, a call, Romans 10, 13. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Has your belief ever brought you to a point of calling out and making Jesus Lord of your life? Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead, do you believe he's risen? Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the boldness, with no shame, with no hesitation, 
Have you called out to Jesus and have you told people that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Have you been saved? Do you believe that he died for you? Do you believe that he took your sins? He became sin for you on that cross. Do you believe that he rose again? Are you going to heaven to be with Father God forever when you die? If you've called on Jesus, if you, if you believe on Jesus, you've called on him, then the answer is yes. But if you are here this morning or you're listening on Facebook Live and you have never called out to Jesus, you can do that right now. Pray this prayer. Say this prayer. Say, Jesus, I am a sinner. Your word makes it clear I'm a sinner. I know myself. I am a sinner. Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. I repent of my sins. I'm going to turn from them, but I need your help. Your word teaches me that you love me, that you died for me, that Father God sent you to die for me, and you rose again. So today, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven tomorrow, and, and when my time comes to leave this planet, to leave this earth, for my heart to stop beating, I want to go to heaven, Jesus. Will you save me? And his answer, as he said, the thief on the cross? The answer is yes. He took the thief on the cross to paradise that day. Have you been saved? Have you asked Jesus to save you? Ask him to save you. He will save you right here and right now. And then you need to tell someone. Now, Christian, you've been saved. We have work to do. In love, we seek out our Savior every day. We seek out Jesus and we're receiving our marching orders until our time comes. We have uh, work to do. There's a plan for your life. We need to seek the Holy Spirit's plan and follow Jesus every day, walking by faith and not by sight. And isn't it good, child of God, that you have a Father that you can pray to? You have a Father in heaven that created you. You have a Father in heaven who sent his son to die for you. Say amen if it's good. Amen. So give him praise. The altar's open. While we sing, you can come up and pray if you need salvation. If you need just to, to pray about some burdens that you need the Lord to take off of you. He loves you. He's a personal Savior. Intimate. You can come forward. He was on that cross. The old rugged cross. That he became sin for us. He did all the work for us. Turn to Jesus today.
Praise God. Praise God. Uh, we are going to see victory in Jesus presently first, and let's exercise some social distancing with some fist pumps and spread out a little bit, and uh, we're going to stay consistent for a while with this. Okay, Father, we thank you today. Thank you, Jesus, for, uh, for oh, Lord, thank you for coming here and taking the sin, Lord, taking our sin, becoming sin for us on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, that you did what we could not do. Thank you, Jesus, that you make it possible uh, for God to be our, our Father. And we're grateful for that. Help us to leave here today being doers of your word and not yours only. And we'll be careful to praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's victory up.